studies, if you want to call it that. And um, I teach in the seventh grade, and it was the seventh grade that actually was charged with, with teaching um, the history of the world uh, in one year. So a part, of, a part of the goal in redesigning this curriculum or, or tweaking it um, was, to, was to get another world studies course within that five through eight um, experience. At the same time, we wanted to do that without, you know, blowing up the entire, um, you know, product that we had and, uh, and, and, and creating more work for, for, for people that was unnecessary. So <clears throat> the, the sequence um, that we came up with seems to be a good fit um, with, other, with other school districts, and uh, so we're pretty excited about it. In fifth grade, there's not a lot of change. It's a U.S. Studies Part 1. And it starts the kids off in uh, pre-Columbus. They uh, talk about explorers um, and the founding of, of, the new, of, of the new land. And that takes them right through the American Revolution. As uh, Marianne alluded to earlier, the, f- the fifth and sixth grade also, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, um, also works with the comprehension toolkit. So that is integrated into the social studies curriculum um, to, uh, to promote uh, literacy uh, w- within the social studies realm. Um, so that's a U.S. that's a U.S. studies. In sixth grade, sixth grade is is the grade that's going to uh, have the the biggest change. Um, sixth grade traditionally has been a, a U.S. history survey, picking up where fifth grade left off um, and going into a more modern U.S. history. Um, but the sixth grade in, in this design is going to um, do a, a, a World Studies one, which talks about the early river civilizations, sort of the first, um, the people uh, that came together to start living in cities. And, and, and the focus in the sixth grade is going to be on uh, why. Why did the people um, migrate and settle and populate where they did? And, uh, and that's a, a real nice concept for sixth graders to be able to grasp, um, and it's something that I've usually done in the seventh grade as well uh, at the beginning of the year. And they'll take, they'll take the, the sixth graders through, um, through up until sort of mid, the Middle Ages or, or medieval times, and um, again with the focus being on geography. And then so the seventh grade can kind of pick up historically, if, you, if you're thinking about it chronologically, Um, They can pick up um, where the sixth grade left off and go from the Middle Ages on through um, essentially uh, as far as a time period, you know, the Renaissance time period. um, And that will allow um, us in the seventh grade to also focus on some contemporary issues because they'll, at that point, the, the kids will have the historical background to be able to understand some of the things that are going on in the world uh, today. Um, so there's, so there's, there's some opportunities there for the kids to get excited about uh, some of the things um, that are happening in the news, and that promotes um, you know, nice family conversations and debates. Um, in the eighth grade, <clears throat> they will p- kind of pick up where fifth grade left off with a U.S. Studies Part Two. Um, and again, there's, there's a little bit of change in the eighth grade a little bit of change in the seventh grade. The eighth grade usually does do a constitution uh, piece where they take that document and they um, they really study it. So um, in here, in this curriculum, what they'll be able to do is actually just maybe do a little bit, cover a little bit more of the history of the Constitutional Convention, um, but still have opportunities to, to focus on the document because they've had some success with eighth graders Looking at that document and so in, in looking at some some of the you know constitutional rights and you know eighth graders love to know what their rights are and um, so that's been that's been successful as well and they'll and they'll sort of take them up through the up through the reconstruction era where um, you know eventually what we've done is we've aligned it so the high school now will be able to pick up um, and get a little bit further than they have in the past. Um, so that's sort of the content that we'll cover in the in the middle school. 
So what we're already doing, uh, as I mentioned, the, the comprehension toolkit, um, is, is this is the first year that fifth and sixth grade, I th is, it, is it the first year? First year. Fifth and sixth grade is doing the comprehension toolkit. Um, we've had the MILTI program in the middle school um, for a while, so we're still um, looking at new ways to integrate uh, technology into the social studies curriculum um, and to prepare kids um, for a world where technology is obviously going to play a major role, as if it already doesn't. Um, and the other thing that's, that's nice, too, is, is we've, we've been able to collaborate <clears throat> and do some interdisciplinary stuff between language arts and social studies because there's, there's, there's so many great um, you know, novels, classroom novels, and, and we traditionally have read a, a, a classroom novel called Crispin, which takes place during the Middle Ages of Europe. Um, and so it sort of lends itself to some, uh, to some great uh, interdisciplinary um, works between, uh, between uh, social studies and language arts. So we're kind of already sort of doing that a little bit, and we'd like to continue to do that. Um, and then the other piece that we're really uh, starting, just starting to do, we have a new librarian in the middle school, and uh, we're really excited about um, developing a, sort of a, a research curriculum that um, can work with, with our social studies curriculum so that we can do um, more research-based, um, you know, projects, but really enhance the skills, the research skills, because it's, it's, it's crucial, particularly with the Internet, um, that the kids really um, have a, a better understanding of how to, how to effectively and appropriately research on, on, on the Internet to get, to get uh, valid information. Um, so, and that's going to be a, a hopefully a school-wide, a system-wide thing as well. So that's sort of what's, uh, what's going on in the middle school. Moving on up. Um, so the high school program, excuse me, I'm losing my voice, um, too much talking. Um, our program at the high school, we are actually in the midst of a pilot year with our World History 1. Next year will be somewhat of a pilot year with our World History 2, so we're very excited. Some of the curriculum I'm going to talk about tonight is curriculum that we have not actually fully implemented yet. Um, so the ninth grade curriculum begin this year, um, half year course, semester course. We do our best to try to um, recap the basic skills that kids have brought with them, that being research, um, you know, overview of sources, how to use sources effectively, introduction to the sources that we have in the library here. Um, the content of the course is an examination of golden ages. That's sort of the, the, the bones of it. And we look at the golden ages of China and the Tang Son dynasties and the golden ages of the Islamic empire, primarily because we think kids don't necessarily think of the, as the, the world of Islam as having had a great golden age that in fact contributed much to the Renaissance and European golden age. So um, that's the content focus of that course leading in to European Golden Age, Renaissance, Reformation, discovery of the new world. We talk not so much about Columbus and discovery, which kids have gotten at, at younger grade levels, but we really focus on uh, two major themes. One is comparing the different patterns of colonization in Latin America and in North America, so kids can begun, begin to build an understanding of you know, why Latin America it looks so different from North America and, and what those differences really came from. Um, we also look at the impacts of the Atlantic slave trade on what had been a golden age for Africa. So um, that's the content. It's a lot of content um, for a semester, and so we're still kind of feeling our way with that. This course is also, I think, a slap in the face for freshmen because we are introducing a, a level of conceptual thinking that they um, have been exposed to but um, hasn't been maybe perhaps demanded of them. We take all the writing skills that they've gathered, their reading and summary skills, and we say, okay, now you need to turn this into persuasive writing on a historical topic. Well, what's the right answer? 
there is no right answer. Scary. Um, and that began as a process of sort of building independent thinking and social studies. The 10th grade course is um, Age of Enlightenment to Total War. Um, we look at uh, the Enlightenment and the revolutions that came out of it, namely the American Revolution, the French Revolution, and Latin American revolutions. <laughs> We look at the Industrial Revolution and how that leads into the era of imperialism. We, look, we then are back around uh, the world looking at various case studies of imperialism in Asia, Africa, um, and then we move into World War I. It's a very world-focused examination of World War I and the causes and the roots so that when kids get to U.S. history, they can focus a lot on sort of what was happening on the home front and the responses to it. We wrap up the course with how World War I leads to World War II, and then sort of this state of the world in 1945-46, Cold War, breaking up of the Middle East, um, uh, you know, some of the organizations like uh, the UN and, and what came out of World War II. So it's a content mm -hmm. focus. In terms of skills, we build the persuasive paragraph into full essays. We have kids begin to integrate sources, multiple sources into their writing, um, and kids do a comprehensive research project. Um, I know some of you were able to come to the poster night um, last week, and, and that is one piece of that uh, research that focuses on a current global issue, non-domestic issue. The 11th grade um, is a U.S. history beginning with, really with Reconstruction. Drawing from what's gone on in eighth grade, the idea is that um, the kids are, can move really into the 20th century where so many of the roots for understanding the modern world are laid and ideally get right up into um, the Clinton era. So um, that's, that's the hope, so the kids feel really primed for understanding the present in this country. Um, in that course, there's more time to writing in preparation for the SAT. There's also um, continued research, and kids at this point will construct a full um, U.S. policy-based research paper. Um, twelfth grade, we're back to a semester course. This is U.S. government. Um, the course focuses not so much on the um, foundations and constitutional congress, although the constitution is, is at the core of the course, but it is modern day applications of the branches of government and sort of how we can integrate our understanding of the structure of government into how the world is being shaped and how our country is being shaped by government decisions today. Um, Kids cap that off with um, the examination of, a, of an issue in the U.S., tracing bills, looking at the role of interest groups, lobbyist groups, um, um, looking at the role of, of, of power players in shaping decisions. So that's a, the quick and dirty of our required curriculum. Um, on the next page, we have, um, or the next slide, we have um, the elective and advanced placement courses that we offer which include an AP U.S. history, AP U.S. government, um, micro and macro economics. Elective courses that we offer are um, currently our honors philosophy and ethics, honors college placement ec um, economics, Holocaust studies, contemporary issues, and main maritime history. Um, and that's kind of a good slide into um, you know what what we think about our program right now um, one of uh, of the strengths we think that our program has um, and I'm going off slide sorry sorry I'm going off slide I can't help it um, you know we strive to be like Lexington or like a Fairfax but we don't have 1500 kids in the school to support a huge teaching staff, so um, the idea that we can provide some diverse electives to kids who may be okay in world history, but oh my gosh, economics, it sparked them. You know, U.S. history, that's fine, but wow, you know, ethics or looking at history from a maritime perspective, it's, it's um, in my opinion, 
and I think the my, members of my department would agree that it is um, a way to pull kids in in their in their interest areas and um, make them passionate about learning by by allowing.